close-up pictures of vegetables, like these, or even popcorn. Ever wonder how photographers take these photographs, getting so close to objects? Well, let's take some pictures of our own today and learn macro photography with popcorn. Here's what you need. A macro lens, I'm going to use a 100mm one. A camera body, I'm using a full frame Canon 5D. A light source, preferably a ring light. By the way, there's a detailed list of equipment in the description. A tripod, a remote camera trigger, or a laptop with software to control the camera. And a clamp holder to hold popcorn in midair. First of all, why do we need a macro lens? Well, a macro lens lets you focus and take pictures of a subject, such as the flower here, from a very small distance, and thus gives you the ability to capture detail in the flower, as shown here, taken with the same 100mm lens and a full frame camera. To give you some numbers, this 100mm macro lens has a minimum focusing distance of 12 inches. But that is the distance from the subject or the flower here to the camera sensor behind the lens. Since the lens and the sensor itself is about 5 inches long, that lets you get as close as just 7 inches from the lens's front glass to the subject. Any other 100mm lens, which is not macro, would increase this minimum focusing distance to 30 inches, or 3 times more compared to a macro lens. This is why macro lenses are crucial for macro photography. Okay, let's get into the setup. I have my 100mm lens on the camera body mounted upside down on a tripod. There's a penguin on the chopping board, but that is just there so I can show you the rough position of my subject. No birds or animals were harmed in this photo shoot. Just me, cause I ate way too much popcorn. Here's some toothpicks we're gonna use, which will be inserted into popcorn hanging from them. And there's my ring light source shining directly from above onto the chopping board. Now let me explain a very important concept called depth of field or simply DOF. Measuring the distance from the camera's sensor to the end of the chopping board, it's 29 inches. I then took letter sized paper and drew horizontal lines one inch apart like this to explain depth of field. So you can think of the paper as the field. I placed that paper exactly 29 inches at the end of the chopping board and then placed vertical markers two inches apart, showing the distance from the camera sensor on these markers. Notice they start from 20 inches and end up at the 29th inch marker. Here's the view from the camera's angle to the paper on the chopping board. Getting closer, you can clearly see vertical markings starting from 20 inch, 22, 24, 26, 28, and finally to the 29 inch marker at the end of the chopping board. I plan to place popcorn on the 26 inch mark, right here, on the yellow line. I now have my camera connected to a laptop with a USB cable which allows me to use Canon software to control my camera remotely. Now let's look at this view to the chopping board through the camera lens. I have my camera in AV or aperture priority mode with the aperture set at f2.8. Here you can see the 20 inch marker through the lens and the rest is out of focus. Now I'll start adjusting the focus on my lens like this and I'm using manual focusing mode. It's always better in my experience to use manual focusing with macro photography. Now notice how when I manually change the focus and keep the aperture constant at 2.8, how each marker gets sharp while the others stay out of focus all the way to the end of the chopping board at the 29 inch marker. And then I slowly return back from the 29 inch marker to 28, to 26, to 24, to 22, and finally to the 20 inch marker. Notice when I'm changing the focus, it only makes one of the markers sharp. Like for example, stopping at the 26 inch mark, you can see only 26 is in focus. This is called a very thin or shallow depth of field. 
on paper, what that means is only the area between the two red lines would be in focus. And the rest outside the red lines will be out of focus or blurry. That's really not practical because usually subjects are bigger than the area between the red lines because you want the entire object to be in focus. Like a popcorn that is probably this thick. So how do we go from a small depth of field to a bigger depth of field to get everything in focus in that area? The answer is right here. The aperture or the F number. Currently it's at F2.8. If you make this number bigger, you get a bigger depth of field. Look what happens when I change the aperture from 2.8 all the way to f25. Notice how 24 inch, 28 inch and even the 22 inch marker got sharper. I just made the depth of field bigger simply by adjusting the aperture or the f number. What's actually happening is that inside the lens, the aperture is getting smaller as I make the f number bigger. And as the opening gets smaller inside the lens, depth of field increases from left to right. This is also the reason why the image got darker when I went to f25. Okay, let's make popcorn. These are the ones I used. And by the way, this is not sponsored. This is all I had. Notice I took the popcorn and I stuck toothpicks in them and then I used the clamps to hold them in midair. I carefully placed each popcorn at a different height to make it look as if they are fallen. But you can use your own creativity here and you may have infinite compositions. I also drew different depth of fields for aperture or f numbers getting bigger to show you how much focus area they cover as f number changes if you look here. Notice how the depth of field or focus area for f11, f16, f25 and f32 is getting bigger. I use the app Digital Depth of Field to calculate these depth of field ranges. You can use any of the various free apps on iOS or Android to calculate depth of field. Enter full frame camera, the focal length of 100 mm, aperture value, and the measured distance to the popcorn from the camera sensor. And I get my depth of field answer. Exact inches in front and back of the subject, area that will be in focus. That's how I figured out all the depth of field for various apertures. And I have all the corn roughly at the 26 inch line. So they're all sharp and in focus. The yellow line is the 26 inch marker and the blue line shows the rough depth of field range. Look, everything is in sharp focus. Here's the 100% pixel view to show you in how much detail you can go into using a macro lens. Finally, after some Photoshop and getting rid of the toothpicks with software editing, here's the final picture. Look how everything is in focus. The picture being sharp was expected as we knew the depth of field and calculated it beforehand. Actually, I like these three corns because they were shaped like puppies. So I set up a new stage with just three of them. And this is what I got. I had to redo calculations because I moved my lens closer to the popcorn or the subject line. The corn puppies. You know, nerds are also allowed to have a sense of humor. Thanks for watching this learnability video. Can I have the popcorn now?